We have offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson. We'll go straight to questions for Coach Dawson. Hey Shannon, just to kind of put this whole uh, obviously bad moment to bed, can you just take us through, you know, no one's really had a chance to talk to you about it, just what, how it evolved on Saturday night and... The whole game? No, you know, the last, the last sequence. Look, I mean, we, we, one of the better four minute drives I've had, you know, I think they had right under six minutes left on the clock, uh, ran it down you know, got into some situations down there where we thought we had a first down, but we didn't. And then we ran another play. Um, what we did at the end was the wrong decision. Um, I called it, it is what it is. You know, wish we would have done something different, but we didn't, so gotta live with it. And what uh, Mario and I talked about earlier, the process of those kind of decisions at the end there, uh, who, who were you talking to at that? Like, I'm not gonna sit here and go through the process. You know, what, what's said on the headsets is between us and um, ultimately, you know, I called the play and I can live with it. It was the wrong thing to do. And what did Georgia Tech do with uh, their defense and what they, did they change anything? That no, I mean, they, they played a little more coverage than, than they had been playing. They mixed up coverages, didn't do the same thing. Um, got their feet in the ground, like I said, they probably would, not, less moving around. It really had little to do with, I mean, we shot ourselves in the foot. Like, I mean, that's just the reality of everybody wants to talk about the end, and I'm good talking about the end. I mean, look, it is what it is. Um, we made the wrong call. Uh, we have to live with that. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of things in that game that could have kept us away from that last play. Uh, offensively, we didn't play our best. We turn the ball over, we put defense in bad situations, which we haven't done all year. I take pride in not putting those guys in bad situations. Uh, we threw some picks that took points off the board in the score zone, which my man asked me last week about red zone. I'm sure he's got that question again, because it was bad. But ultimately, you know, we didn't play our best. Now, with that being said, you hope in those games where you don't have your A game, that you can grind it out. Like you find a way to win. I was extremely proud of our group of keep fighting. Like we dug ourselves a hole and we got out of it. We dug ourselves a hole and we got out of it. I mean, if, if you sit in his room and you watch football every year and you think every game is gonna go perfect, then you're watching the wrong sport. You're not gonna have your A game every week. The key is to win when you don't. And we didn't have our A game and we didn't win. Uh, we messed it up. Look, we got to live with it. And we're not the only ones out there that didn't have our A game. Like I got home that night and I'm sitting here watching USC with 300 total yards at the end of the game fighting for their life. The difference is they found a way to win. You know, you know, I think their quarterback, when I turned on the TV in the end of the fourth, was 11 for 24. He won the Heisman Trophy. So, you know, Tyler was almost 70%, threw for 300 yards, almost 300 yards. He had some crucial turnovers. You know, he knows it. They weren't all his fault either. You know, they were not all his fault. But like every man that, that plays this game and coaches this game, you take accountability for everything. And there's the right people in this building. There's the right people on this team that don't mind taking accountability, and that's the most important thing. I don't mind taking accountability for what I do wrong either. And kind of in the same vein, kind of what you were saying, Tyler, after the game, did say they weren't my fault. What does it say about him as a leader that he wants to take that accountability? I mean, all you got to see in that game is the pick he threw and chased the guy down, and, and it was a field goal, not a touchdown. Gave us a chance to win the game. That one play is indicative of him and his effort he put in that game. That was the actual pick that wasn't his fault. Like, chase that guy down and tackle him. I thought that was exceptional by him. Was there a common thread in the other picks? Not exactly like that play. Um, the, the one pick in the end zone was just a bad decision. It was just laid over the middle. I mean, you're gonna have those at times. And really the other one was a pretty damn good play by the corner, to be honest with you. You know, and sometimes that happens. Um, and, the, and the one that was a good play by the corner, I kind of put that one on me. Um, that call and that situation, you know, I could have I could have I could have called something a little better than that. So Trina, what did you see with the run game? Um, obviously Georgia Tech had its struggles. Just what did you see with your guys? I thought we were efficient. I thought we weren't, you know, if you look at the run game, I mean, we ran it a lot, right? Uh, because of they're sitting there playing coverage. 
we didn't have our A game. I didn't feel like throwing the football. I thought we were a little off. So grinding it out and leaning on those guys with the decision I made, I don't regret that. I just think the flow of that game, if you look at the first half, you know, we weren't clicking, you know, and we were shooting ourselves in the foot. And so the one thing that we were doing pretty well is when we handed it, we got five, six yards. And so ultimately I wanted to lean on them a little bit, which we did. We didn't, the one thing we didn't have in the run game is a lot of explosives, you know. We kind of got what we got. Does that make sense? Uh, and I thought the O-line was pushing them. Like we were caving them in. And so, but we just got what we got. And that's why you run for 160 something on 40 something carries and it's not 200 and something, right? We need an explosive in there too, you know? Yeah, to, to their point, 12 yards was the longest carry. Uh, did you see more opportunities? What, where was it? I think we missed some. I think we missed some. Um, and look, nobody's perfect, right? Everybody's got, everybody can do better. And uh, we, we left some out there in the run game for sure. We did see uh, Riley Williams caught his first collegiate touchdown. Yeah. Uh, his development is a true freshman, and you think that he's someone who's going to be relied upon more and more as the year goes on. Yeah, I mean, I think the ball will find people that are making plays, for sure. And um, and he, he he made a good play. It was third down, and, you know, make a heck of a play, right? I mean, I wish he wouldn't reach the ball over the goal line, but he got it in. He'll learn from it. He's a young guy, too. But he had an opportunity a couple other times, too. And so the ball will find you. You just gotta you gotta keep doing what you're doing. I respect that you don't want to go through the process of the half sets, but every play caller I assume has a chart or a philosophy. Mm -hmm. If this, then that. Did you go against your chart? Look, we it was the wrong decision. You know, it was the wrong decision. And ultimately, there you know, you know, looking back, if you had to do over again, you call a timeout, you regroup, you do that. And so, you know. It is what it is. Uh, Matt McCoy had a chance to come in a little bit when, uh, when Francis went down for part of the game. Um, he's gotten some playing time this year uh, in reserve. What have you thought of how? I thought he did really well. I thought he, he went in at a crucial time. And, you know, the, the biggest thing is you didn't even notice he was in there, right? And so the pocket was good. Everything was on point. I was very, very pleased with the way he went in and performed. What did you notice with the red zone um, opportunities there? I mean, just self-inflicted wounds. I mean, you, you get down there. I mean, it's indicative of the whole first half, right? We, we take the ball, we drive, we go 40 yards this way, then we go 20 yards back that way on a, on a um, penalty on the sideline. You know, I mean, it's a difference between being on the 40-yard line, which is what that run ended up, and being on the 26-yard, 27-yard line, right? 28-yard line. Or uh, it might have been 38. I can't remember. It was one of them. But you know, you you can't go you can't go backwards like that. You know, and so if you look at the whole first half, which honestly, you know, I'm always I always worry about coming off a of bye week because most of my history of coaching off of a bye week, the first half would look something like that. You know, I don't know why. It's not like it's every time, but it's enough to where it gives me some anxiety and it's just when you're not clicking on all cylinders and it's just people aren't in sync like it was you know you struggle you know now we could have done multiple things that first half to not you know we run a touchdown in and we get a holding penalty right that's one red zone pick because the next two plays later we do the pick you know but we, we scored on the second play of that and so you know, the the two, let's see, we were two or six, I think, right? Two, I think it was two or six, right? Red zone opportunities? I think it was six or four. Was it, was it four? Four opportunities. Four, four opportunities, two touchdowns? One touchdown and two field goals. Yeah. So the interception was the one, right? Uh, the field goal, the, that one bothered me the most probably because the defense gives us a sharp field and we don't do anything with it. The first run play I thought should have scored. The safety made a good play. You know, we had an open deal. And the second play call um, was a slip to the tight end at the end went up the field, so we handed it. And then we ran a similar play that Riley scored on out of a different formation. And they brought internal pressure. They brought one more than we could block. And so I could have done a much better job in that sequence of events of calling us better second down play and better third down play. You know, I put that possession on me there. And uh, the other one, I can't remember what happened on the other field goal. 
but that's two. Two of the three were, um, you know, one was a pick and one was, I got to do better. You've had, you've had, I think, five running backs score so far. You've had six or seven receivers finding the end zone. Obviously, you've got a lot of options. Mm -hmm. How have you managed keeping everybody pretty much happy? Pretty well, happy. I don't know if everybody's happy. I no, mean, that's, it, that's it a, pretty much you know, happy. yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, we're going to go with the hot hand, and I think situations have a little bit to do with those decisions, too, you know. Some guys are better in other situations than other guys. But ultimately, if a guy's in there and we're rolling, he's going to stay in there. You know, it's really drive to drive. But, you know, I think supporting your teammates is, is critical. You know, I think um, – and no different than, you know, I mean, right now in the situation we're in, you can't, you can't just be good teammates and love each other when things are going good. That's not, that's not the way life is, you know. And so the true test of your character is how you treat your teammates and how you treat people around you when things are bad. And so right now we got the right people in the building. What and have you so, seen from those guys, defense and, and coach Chizik? You know, they're not overly complicated, but they're really good at what they do. You know, if you look at them statistically, they're, they're not bad at anything. Like nothing statistically like glares at you at, oh man, these guys are struggling at this. They're ranked around 30 to 40 in every statistical category. You know, I think they're, they're very experienced. They've played a lot of football, but they've also played a lot of football in the same scheme, which means a lot, right? Uh, they have bank reps. And so, you know, the linebacking core is as good as we've seen or probably the best, to be honest with you, that we've seen. And, um, and so they're a very talented group and, you know, and then they're good at what they do. And then, and, and it's, it, the scheme is, is, is designed in such a way where the problems are solvable because they know, you know, they're not overly complex. But that, to me, that's a testament of a good defense. We'll do a couple more for Coach Johnson. Uh, UNC brought back uh, the receiver, Tess Walker. Obviously, he had a very strange situation with the NCAA. Um, what's it like, whether it's even injury, suspension, weird thing, whatever, when a player's not integrated that kind of in, into a game, the gameplay incumbent halfway through the season, how do you kind of? Get a player in like that, I guess. Oh, how would I do it? Yeah, if you've ever had I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I don't look. I'm not there, so I don't know what their process is. But if they thought the guy was going to be eligible at any point in the season, he's probably been taking reps. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how he did last week because I don't look at that side of the ball. But you know, I'm, I'm sure the kid has been taking reps if they had any kind of percentage of him maybe being available. How, how has the energy been just at practice? It's been great. Look, practice today was great. I mean, um, look, kids are resilient, you know. It's the people around them that are, you know what I mean? And they're probably more resilient than coaches, to be honest with you. I mean, we take it – I mean, I, look, that was as hard of a loss as I've had in my career. I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, I slept none that night, and, you know, it affects you. It affects your family. It affects everybody, you know. But ultimately, we have another game to play in a week, you know. And so you gotta get, you gotta move on. I mean, no different than a good game. You better move on, you know. And so you know, I knew that we were gonna get a highly motivated Georgia Tech team because they got embarrassed the week before by a team they should have beat. Um, but you know, we have to we have to respond in, in such the same way. You know, I mean, we have the we have the right people in place and the right leadership. I mean, God dog, <clears throat> the leadership is um is strong. And so we follow him, and, and they follow him the same way. And our kids are saying the right things. And, and they know they got to put blinders on and block out the outside noise. It's just the nature of the sport we play, you know. If you don't think you're going to take some criticism by a game like that, then you're crazy. We should, right? But it's our job to get it back, too, right? Yeah, along the lines of what you were talking about before in terms of, like, not, not because you would do it to keep everybody happy, but would you like to see the ball spread around a little bit more than maybe it is right now? I mean, you're used to guys putting at up big stats. Receiver stack. at receiver yeah, mostly in, so. in the passing game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, in a way, I would. I mean, we got guys making plays, so it's hard. Like this is the deal. You know, we gotta we gotta probably divvy up the reps at receiver a little bit more, like we're doing at running back. The issue with that is, you know, when you got people that are playing at a pretty high level and the game is really tight and you're not necessarily clicking, it's hard to take those guys out. Right. It just is, you know, I've done it for a long time and like, you know, Strep is in there playing, making key catches. Yeah, he's tired, but I mean, 
tell me the key moment that we don't want him out there. You know what right. I mean? It's like, and we and we can rest him in other personnel groupings too. But you know, it, it, but there is three or four guys that I think as the next two or three weeks go, you know, they'll they'll get more playing time and get more balls. Last question. I just wanted to ask you about. I know you guys have to block out the noise, obviously, but um, you know, how is Don Cheney doing? Right. He's doing awesome. He's doing awesome. Nobody blames him, I promise you. Nobody in this building. I mean, he, that kid played his heart out. And he played, he was one of the reasons that we were in that situation. And so, you know, I mean, he, he's doing good. I mean, he, look, like everybody, you think anybody on our in our organization was happy after that game, you're crazy, right? And so, but ultimately, it helps when you got a lot of people that love on you, right? Get you through it, so, you know. Thanks, Coach Tom.